Hey, what's up, everybody? How's it going? Travis and Susie here from the Wolf Hunters got a reaction video for you. We got a link right here. You can find that link in the description box below if you'd like to request your own personal reaction video. Today's video is brought to you by Brian. It's Brian! Bringing us what, Suze? Say Bramat de Amar by Xerxes. Oh, from Xerxes by George Frederick Handrel. Great. I'm glad you had to say that instead of me. Say Bramand Diamar. Do you want to read the note here? I don't know how to say that, but I did try. Hi, Travis and Susie. I'm glad you enjoyed the Beethoven request and that it inspired some good questions. Here is my attempt to answer them. <laughs> Number one, what determines how many players are in the orchestra? The short answer is the music. The woodwind and brass parts are always one player to a part, and the composer specifies the oh, really? exact number of wind parts in the score. Okay. The number of string players is then determined by how the conductor wants to balance the winds. However, non-musical factors often come into play as well for the number of strings, such as budget, availability of players, how many okay. people will fit onto the stage, etc. Gosh. That's Ditto funny. for the number two of choristers when there is a choir involved. Two, what's in the conductor's hand? And can substitution, <laughs> substitutions be made? <laughs> that was a funny one. I like that question. The though. stick I'm, the conductor I'm excited holds to is a baton. A, a baton. baton. Duh. Okay. Which is a ball and stick made from a light, made, made of lightweight woods and is carefully designed to be balanced if you let it rest wow. on your finger where the ball Dang, that's meets serious. the stick. Okay. When a baton is used, yeah. it is always held in the right hand. Huh. Many conductors use just their hands without a baton. The only substitute I've seen by a professional conductor is by Russian conductor Valery Gurdjieff, who uses a toothpick. <laughs> Yes. I can't pronounce the guy's name, so I just referred to him as toothpick. Oh, dang. Number three. Do conductors always wear tails? Only the most formal do. Coats with tails are falling out of fashion, so you see them less often today than okay. tw 10 or 20 years ago. Four. Who is who's the edgiest conductor? That brings us to today's request. Oh! <laughs> Let's face it, conductors can be pretty weird. I don't know if edgy is the right word, but Peter Jan Luzink's conducting in this excerpt from Handel's Oratorio Xerxes is the most bizarre I have seen in a serious professional setting. I promise you this is not a spoof or prank. Just look at the audience. No one is laughing. Wow. Unfortunately, I laugh whenever I see this. You might too, and it's okay. By the way, you guys never answered my question if you've been to Severance Hall in Cleveland. Oh, we didn't? I hope you enjoy I'm this sorry. little aria by Handel. No, no we, we have not. not been there. No, I didn't. I've never, I have not even I'm heard so of it. sad that coats with tails are going out of style because I, do like I love that yeah. a lot. All right. Thank you so much for answering all yes, these questions and awesome. bringing us videos to see the exact example. So that okay, is Okay, time cool. out, though. Before we hit play, I have to say, I love, actually, when a conductor is, like, lost in what the conductor is doing. There are, like, conductors do that. They get lost in the music, and it is the best. So I, I hope that that's what we're about to see. Yeah. Let's do it. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Thank Brian below in the comment section. All right. We were told that we would possibly be set up for some laughter in this one. So please, guys, don't get mad at us if we laugh. At don't this. get mad at us if we laugh. No. What in the world is that? <gasps> New question. What in the world is that? That is one instrument right here. This That super oh, long that's thing. A, we've seen that before. We've seen that before. That girl played that. Yes, but... This one I feel like is extra big. Maybe it's just because it's next to all the violins. It's a pretty large instrument. I can't remember what it's called. And but I, I don't want to like, I don't want to like guess. This? Was yeah. That it? And I don't want to guess because if I do and I'm wrong, then Dang. 
That thing looks like Someone a might that's come like hunt me down and hit like me over the head with That's the rocket launcher of, of instruments. That's a bazooka. Right <laughs> All right, let's go. I already love it. Yes! I want a chance to do that. I right. love him. If you're gonna lean <laughs> over, you gotta back up because then I'm like not on the screen. Oh, sorry. All right, here we go. I love him. I love him so much. All right. <laughs> So Travis often talks about um, how in the dancing world, there's people who were professionally professionally taught mm -hmm. and street Trained. dancers. Yeah, like studio, well, called studio dancers or street dancers. Yeah, there's a difference. <laughs> and I so, and so, you would to a lot of other people, they might not even be able to tell the difference. Tell the difference. But to um, any dance. professional dancer, yeah. they'd be or street dancer or whatever you'd be able to tell the difference yeah. oh that person's a street dancer yeah. that person is a professional dancer or was professionally trained yeah. um um no matter what setting you're in like you wouldn't have to see them on the street you would know even if they're in a professional setting mm -hmm. that they were a street dancer i feel like this guy is like the street dancer version of a conductor where yeah. he's just so good at what he's done that he was able to transcend professional training mm. um because he obviously yeah. is if he's in this professional setting he's obviously respected yeah. so you know that he was able to because of his skill yeah. and maybe his knowledge or whatever his passion was able to transcend professional mm. um training and I love it. Yeah, I do too, actually. Ta this guy, too. Holy smokes. Captivating. They're both captivating. Yeah. I mean, they all sound fantastic. He's doing something right. Oh, yeah.
you see all those horn instruments that are like got so many circles? Like a French horn? Is that what it is? You know what I would love to see, mostly because I would love to be the one to do it, is a uh, orchestra challenge where someone such as myself comes into the room with an orchestra and tries to direct the song and the orchestra has to follow the, the lead of the conductor that has no experience conducting, but when they say go bigger and louder, they follow, when they say quieter, they follow and they just have to like do that and it's like yeah, a challenge it's not like <clears throat> you know in a in a band setting you either have your 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 drummer who you rely on for yeah. basically a live metronome or you have a click in your ear but in an orchestra as we've learned from yeah. brian yeah there's neither of those things that the conductor is solely responsible for deciding the 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 tempo live yeah. of the piece. And then, but what if somebody like me also did not know proper hand gestures and they had to interpret what they thought I was trying to tell them to do? I mean, that's what they'd have to do if they didn't know you. But like, yeah. the more that you know a conductor, you would yeah. learn their, their, yeah. What would, they, would, it, would that mannerisms. be? Mannerisms. Yeah. You That'll would be learn fun. That. Yeah. That's a good time. If anyone will set that up, <clears throat> just let me know. Film it, put it on YouTube. Woo. Oh my gosh. That delivery was beautiful. I, I really enjoy their sound. Such an intimate setting too, that would be so cool. Yes. yes! Yes! Don't you ever just want to watch, like, be able to hear these singers practicing in their house? Like, the other day, the other day after seeing some um, opera 
videos, I just sang everything that I was saying to my kids, like as if it was an opera. Hmm. Like if it was a serious moment, I even slowed it down, you know? And uh, it wasn't long before they were like, seriously, please stop. But it was really fun. I wanted them to join me, but they would not. Thank you so much for that and for all that information and yes, for showing us so uh, fun. such a cool video. Thank you guys for hanging out. If you enjoyed hanging out, hit like and subscribe. Check out this link below in the description box to request your own personal reaction video. Stay tuned. Stay positive. We love you guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. I just want to my day.